Today, we're going to be talking about the taxation of Social Security benefits when you're receiving those benefits. There's a lot of confusion out there. There's also some very interesting strategy. And oftentimes, there's money left on the table that people are not even aware of. I hope you enjoy. So today we're going to be talking about taxation of Social Security when you're drawing benefits. This is not very well understood, but as you get clarity, it becomes an extremely powerful tool. And Social Security has some unique tax provisions that are afforded to it. And it's worth understanding because if you don't understand it, in a lot of cases, you just leave money on the table or you end up giving more to the government than you actually had to. And I've never met anybody that was really that excited about doing that. So we're going to bounce over here onto this IPVO camera. And then we, we start thinking about taxation of Social Security. What we have to understand is, so the federal government has what they call combined income, and that's how they determine whether your Social Security is going to be taxed. And combined income is made up of your adjusted gross income plus tax exempt interest, which is surprising to a lot of people, plus one half of your social security benefit. So when we take those figures and we add them together, if you are married, filing, joint, and those numbers come up to $32,000 or less, then none of your Social Security is reportable as taxable income. If you're between 32 and 44,000, up to 50% of your Social Security is reportable. And then over 44,000, up to 85% is reportable. Now, if you're a single filer, you're at zero when your combined income does not exceed 25,000. Up to 50% is going to be reportable if you're between 25 and 34. And then if you exceed 34,000, up to 85%. Okay? So you can see there are a lot of different positions you can be in. And if you understand those positions, you can use them again to your advantage. So let's just take an example, just a kind of a moderate example of a couple. And they have a Social Security benefit of $25,000 between the two of them. Okay. Then... They've determined they need to take an IRA. They have all of their money saved up in IRA accounts, 401ks, all pre-tax, so no Roth. So they take an IRA distribution, 20000 which means they've got an income, a household income of $45,000. So where does that put them on this provisional income scale? Well, the first thing we got to do is determine if any, does any of their Social Security warrant being reported. So we look and say, all right, they're looking at $20,000 IRA distribution. And other than Social Security, that's all they've got. So then we take half of their Social Security, which is $12,500. And we add those two figures together we get $32,500. And we just said the threshold was 32. So they did go over the threshold by $500. And when we're between 32 and 44, we use half of that amount. So in this case, one half of that amount would be 250. So they have to report $250 of their Social Security. So now let's look at where that might be on the tax scale. So if they had on their 1040, they had 
a $20,000 distribution from their IRA they have to report. And then they had $250 of Social Security. That means they got $20,250 of reportable income. Now, what's the current standard deduction for married, file, and joint? It changes a little each year, but in this current year, it's at approximately $27,000. So the standard deduction is 27K. Well, if I have a $27,000 standard deduction and I only have $20,250 of taxable income, doesn't that make my tax bill zero? I've got more standard deduction than I actually have reportable income. So I have a $45,000 income. I'm paying zero income tax. But that's not the end of the story. Because if you look at this and you think about it, I've got more room where I could potentially be moving some of my fully taxable dollars from the fully taxable side of the ledger over, get them through the tax filter and do it at a 0% tax rate. Or if I was willing, I could go a step further and do it at a discounted tax rate. This is where tons of money is left on the table for many retirees. And they end up giving money to the federal government that they didn't have to just because nobody ever walked them through any of these scenarios and showed them what was possible and what potential that they had. And as you can probably see or tell, I get kind of excited about this stuff. So if this is something that you feel like would be of value to you, or if you know somebody that's getting ready to claim Social Security, or they already have, and you feel like they would want to see where they are and whether they could take steps to improve their situation, don't hesitate to give us a call here at Westside Advisors and Insurance Services. I hope you have a great week. Thank you.